be down the gym, Callum and doing like sit ups and press ups. Who who is training whom at that point? Me. So how would you say I'm training in a reflexive manner there? Je m'entraîne. Je m'entraîne. Good. Okay. Uh, training, as in a mental training, although we often use it for skill sets of careers, is une formation. You're forming someone. So, j'ai fait ma formation à Paris. Say that for me. Uh, j'ai fait mon, uh, what was it? Mon... My formation. I did my formation in Paris. J'ai, j'ai fait ma formation à Paris. Go again. Um, be careful with mon en ma. Go. J'ai fait ma formation à Paris. Lovely, Cal. Okay. Um... Um, after finishing my, my training, same word. Après avoir fini ma formation. And before uh, I lost the weight. This means nothing, it's just for grammar. Before I lost the weight. Uh, avant de perdre. Uh, uh, avant... avant de perdre. Lovely. Avant de perdre. Um, is it like taste? Well done, well done, you're thinking Spanish, but it's still going to help you here. So, pose is the verb, copy me, pose. Pose. Go again, pu, uh, 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 say pose. Pose. Good, spell it for me. P-E-S-E-R. Good, say for me, I weigh. Je pèse. Je pèse. So, it's going to be one of those. So, how do you think we're spelling je pèse? Um, P with the I. Is it? Accent grave, grave. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Grave. Exactly. Yeah. So two types. We have jeté becomes jet. We double up the t. Appelé becomes appel. We double up the l. On anything where there's you know not um, anything where it's the last syllable basically. So appel, appel, appel. The cause will be double l's. Otherwise, appelant, appelé. If there's an ending after the the l, it will just be a singular l. So um, uh, but these ones we're going to add a grave. So je me lève. Yeah, so left toi, um, yeah. you know, je me suis levé. It's, it, it's important to remember to go back down. Um, good, so uh, after, so before, so I lost the weight, j'ai perdu le poids. P-O-I-D-S, say for me, le poids. Le poids. Good, verb, word for slim, beginning with an M. Beginning with an M? M for mother. Uh, mince. Good, go long, mince. Mince. Good, okay. Uh, word for fat. Lovely. Word for skinny, which I know we use in a positive way nowadays, but is actually kind of originally a negative adjective in French, so skinny in a bad way. Um, also beginning with an M. Think meagre in English. Okay. Lovely. Can you give me the, inf- the verb of all of those? Um, grossier. Grossier. So a lot of verbs of transformation, when you have a noun, so blech, blech, when you have a, an adjective, and you're going to make it into a verb, will often be ir. So, blanc, blanchir, to whiten. Roux, rougir. So, I went red, j'ai rougi, yeah? What do you think the verb to go yellow is? Um, jaunir. Lovely. So, the past is jauni, which is where we like get... an actual verb. Yeah, to go yellow. Like, well, we use any... We just say to go yellow, but it's an actual verb. Jaunir. Noircir. We don't say noirir, to go black, noircir. Um... Uh, rougir to go red, like oh gosh, you know, uh, lovely, lovely, ah, oh, lovely J, uh, J, J think in English, like G. Um, rougir, uh, so what's what's to slim down if the adjective in question is mince? Mincir. Lovely, what's to get fat? Uh, grossir. Lovely, now, so mincir, grossir, blanchir, whatever. So, how would you say you need to whiten your teeth? Using um, and not using an infinitive. So the verb is blanchir. Let's start with il faut que. Il faut que vous blanchiez, is it? Now, what's the verb? Blanchir. Good. What's the verb to finish, Callum? Finir. Great. How do you say he finishes? Il finit. How do you say it is necessary that he finishes? Good. Now, the reason we did that was because we knew it wasn't a standard soft hard. We knew it was an A verb. Uh, we didn't. Luke, don't talk rubbish. We knew it was an, um, a snake verb. Agreed? Yeah. Other than just knowing them, why do we know that finir is a snake verb and sortir is a standard soft hard? What is, what is literally happening here? And you can work this out without looking at it if you want. What would happen if you took finir and you literally tried to make it a soft hard? What, what sound would you have if you literally stopped before the first hard letter? 
Um, if you've got thin ear and I ask you to mm-hmm. c- come in before the first hard, what would you literally have? We don't. We don't do this. Okay. If we've got pouvoir, and I ask you to give me the soft, what would you say? Oh. Great. If I gave you um, sortir, and I ask you to come in before the hard, what would you say? Soft. Lovely. If I gave you finir, and I asked you to come in before the hard, what would you have? Fi, which unless you're being Bruce, Bruce Forsyth, fi fi fi, is not a word. So the fact is, you're like, okay, but Luke, that's one syllable, and sur is one syllable. But the point is, you would be left with f and an i, so you'd be literally hanging on an open vowel. If you think of all the other soft hards that you know, there's normally a bit of a consonant there. Vendre, what's the softer vendre? What's the soft vent? You've got that a little bit of an energy of a nut going on. So if I've got, for example, obeir, obeir, which is to obey, O-B-E with the accent I-R, obeir, what literally is the soft? Um, obey. No, if you've got obey, obeir, what literally is the soft? Literally the most accurate soft before the hard letter comes down. Um, say the word with me, say obeir. Where does your mouth first close? Ah, uh, b- yeah. So get, stop before that. What would you have? Uh, there you go. Do you see what I mean? It's ridiculous. It, in that case, it's one letter. What's the verb to choose? Choisir. Lovely. Literally, literally. What would the soft be if you stop before the first hard? Um, Not that we do that, but what would it be? So you've got schwa. So so say them for me, Callum. Go long and go long on the first vowel. Say schwa and notice the close. Say it for me. Lovely. So what are we closing on? Schwa. So, 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 yeah, so that would that is what we'd be left with. And how would we be spelling that? Um, C-H-O-O-I. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? Because what's our infinitive? C-H-O-I-S. So I, is I a vowel or a consonant? Um, a vowel. Great. So do you see how that's one of the reasons we know, oh, we can't do that. We have to jump over... Why do we jump because we see a snake and we keep, we just go choisi, 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 choisissant, choisissez, choisissent. So with that in mind, your mouth sort of instinctively knows um, just verbs of transformation as well. You just know blanc, blanchi, 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 not blanc, blanc, blanc. So blanchi, blanchi, blanchi. What's we whiten? Nous? Blanchissant. Good. So bearing in mind we've got blanchissant, straight off, give me it is necessary that I whiten. Um, Good boy, got it. Okay, I was whitening. That makes sense. Um, je blanchissais. And again, get it in your mind. Je blanchissais. Je blanchis. Je blanchissais. Yeah, je blanchissais. Good. Okay. Um, we, which bit is the bit that's sort of emphasized the most? Je blanchis. In that, uh, je blanchis. Je blanchis. In that one, je blanchis. Enfin, moi, je blanchis. Le. It's fairly neutral, to be honest with you. In that one, it's fairly pretty, pretty spread, well, nicely spread. Uh, je, but you were saying blanchissais, you were going up in the middle, which is not what we do. Je blanchissais okay. le, okay? It's boom, 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 je blanchissais le. Um, je blanchissais. Lovely, okay. Um, so, if I said, it is necessary that I get my teeth whitened, which is probably the truth, because I drink a lot of tea. So, um, it is necessary that, um, off you go, that I whiten my teeth. How would you do that? Um, il faut que je blanchisse les dents. No. What would... No, the lay dent is great, and I love the instinct to use lay rather than may with a body part, but what else could you do there? Il faut que je... Mm. Uh, make it reflexive. Good. So go on, if you go. Il faut que je me blanchisse les dents. Les dents. Yeah, il faut que je blanchisse les dents, il faut que je me, je blanchis, euh, je me blanchisse les dents. This me kicks in a lot of the time, remember, for for somebody. Any of your indirect pronouns can be for somebody as well. So it's kind of like something I need to do for myself, okay? Um, okay. How would you say, I bought myself a dog? Um, is it, je me suis acheté... Lovely. Un chien. Good, okay. I did Callum's work. How would you say, I did Callum's work? Um, j'ai fait le travail de Callum. I did his work. Je fais son travail. Okay, I did his work for him. Um, je, 
fait son travail pour lui. Lovely. Now put the for him in the middle of the sentence. And I will remind you again what I just said. The indirect also means for the person. So what can what could that mean? What is um, so indirect is also known as to the person, isn't it? So if I said I speak to him, which is indirectly, how would you say that in three words? I speak to him. Great. So the pro pronoun we need for to him in this case, or indirect, forget about to him, just think indirect, is what is it on its own? Oui. Great. So I did his work for him would be je lui ai fait son travail. Yeah? Okay? And that's a really French thing to get into doing as well. Je fais son travail pour lui. Non, mais je lui ai fait son travail. Yeah, okay. Say for me, he did. Il a fait. He did it. Il a fait. Beautiful work. He did it for me. That, that sounds exactly the same. So is there something I need to like... No, it's an absolutely valid point. Or, it's a completely valid point. Il a fait. Il a fait. To me, there's a bit more musculature. There's il a, a bit more... Il a fait. Il a... There's a bit il more le, 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 le going on in the tongue. Il a fait. Il a fait. Il a fait. Um, je l'ai fait, je l'ai... Um, uh, il, 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 il a fait, il a fait... It's also the speed to which you go to the, the preposition... Uh, the speak English. Um, it's the speed to which you go to the auxiliary. Il a fait, il a, il a fait... It's kind of like... There's just a bit more of a l going on. You can hear it. Yeah. yeah? Um, uh, so say for me, he did it. Again, just he did it. Il a fait. Good. Uh, I don't necessarily need volume. I, need, I just need more l in the tongue. Il a fait. Better, well done. Um, which is rare I'm asking for that, isn't it? Because normally I say push for the vowel. But on this one I need that bit of the, 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 the consonant. Good. So he did it for me. Il... So a way to... Il me l'a fait. Great. Now, a way to speed this up and get this to normal Callum levels would be to think if we were using the bits box and the verbs box... And remember, we don't think in English, then extrapolate what we need from it and then make bits and verbs. We think of the beach ball technique, where I'm on a beach, I've got this, I need to see the person I'm throwing to, so there's, there's an I to him, then my verb throw. And again, it's like, I've got different beach balls, right? The red one or the green one. So I see Callum, I to him, it throw. Je le lui, um, uh, je le lui, whatever. You've got those three ingredients. Um, that you just know those are your three ingredients. So your three ingredients, i.e. non-verbal parts of the sentence, and I give it, he does it for me. Was that the one I was on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've got an he, I've got a me, me, I've got an it, il me le. So that's really the way your brain has got to start concocting these, is you just think of the three ingredients. Il me l'a fait. Say it for me. Il me l'a fait. Good, okay. Lovely. Um, uh, lovely. Um, after having done... Après avoir fait. After having done it. Après l'avoir fait. Good, okay. It made it a lot easier. Um, il l'a rendu plus facile. Good, get into the habit of using ça. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, what's the formal version of ça we can use in essays that I've yeah. mentioned? Good boy. What don't we have on a sola? An accent on the C because the E is a good vowel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So get into the habit of going samu, sulamu. Okay. So say for me, you sa for the moment. So it annoyed me. Sama enerve. Sama enerve. Good. Okay. You've got ennui. You've got ennuyé in your mind kind of thing. But sama enerve. Okay. Because. Parce que. I was bored. Give me one with an adjective, one with a verb. Good, give me the other one, which is tend to use a bit more often. Je m'ennuyais, good, okay. Now, some slang French, okay. So, je m'ennuyais trop, je m'ennuyais uh, à dompf. À dompf means like, boof, like full on, full on, okay. Um, some other slang French, give me, I was very bored. Um, which one do you want, either? I was very bored, you give me, I was very bored. Oh, oh, well in this case, um, right, okay, so, je me faisais chier. Yeah, I was making myself shit. So, we've had this expression for piss off, have we not? Yeah, okay, as in, not piss off as in the command, but as in like, oh, he was pissing me off. Il m'a fait chier, okay? So this is obviously not for exam purposes. But he makes, he annoys me, il me fait chier. Now, without being disgusting, when you say something pisses you off, you don't actually think in English uh, of the piss. Or I'd like to think you didn't, unless you were a bit literal, which would perhaps be a bit, you know? I'd like to think, okay? Um, uh... Uh, yeah, as the joke goes, why did the condom fly around the room? It was pissed off. 
But the fact is, you don't think you don't think about the piss. This is a disgusting lesson, but there you go. Okay, so this is the same in French. So il me fait chier. Without being 